Hey guys, Oliyama here. Now, this is going to be a big one. That, that's what she said. Alright, um, yeah, as per the title, this is a quick review, or rather a sort of like an in-depth review for both of these hilts that I have just received yesterday. Now, um, as per the title suggests, this is a review on both the Raxus SK as well as a prototype star killer that I've received yesterday. All right. So um, first things first, we'll deal with the Raxus beforehand. All right. Let me just put this to the side. All right. Okay. Now Raxus SK, produced by Sean Patterson over at so SP Sabers. Excuse me. And this hilt was designed by Jeremy over at Solo Sabers. Now. This hill, I believe the it was announced, I believe it was like a year ago, I believe it was on March. So yeah, Jeremy uh, announced it along with Sean and it's really, it's really beautiful, right? First impression, it's a beaut, without a shadow of a doubt, right? Um, designed by Jeremy, now he stated that he was going for a... Graflex 2.0 conversion rather than an IG version or rather an in-game version so it's not actually meant to be accurate whatsoever but be that as it may it still is beautiful right now some highlights or the selling point for this uh, lightsaber in my opinion are these so titanium rods and titanium crystal chamber parts are all in titanium so it will translate very nicely if you heat stain them you see there are shades of purple, blue, um, copper, and um, yeah, these fins, excuse me, these fins as, as well as the rear rods here are actually uh, modded and added by um, Hadi Shazwan, Bubu's Garage. He has done all of my custom savers and I think it looks really nice, right? In combination with, you know, um, Sean, Jeremy, and Hadi Shazwan, this hilt is... Um, in my opinion, one of the more beautiful hilts that I own and will continue to be my shelf queen, right? Yeah, but enough um, dogging and fawning over this hilt and let's get into the actual review itself. Now, the external part of the hilt, okay? There are some differences that has been uh, done to this hilt um, by Hadi. Um, the first being the shrouds. And if you look, uh, they are actually modded and actually been extensively cut to have a more aggressive look on this Raxus XK. And I think it looks beautiful. All right. Um, the as I mentioned previously, the rods, the rear rods as well as the fins are all added by him, by Bruhadi. And uh, yeah, I think that's it for his mod because the the hilt, the hilt itself is is already. Um, it's already captivating on its own. It's just that the, these few modifications are of my own preference. Felt that it could be a bit better and crank the coolness factor up to 11. So these are all my preferences, right? So these emitter rings as well as, um, oh, excuse me, the emitter rings as well as these Graflex panels are all in steel. So it has been heat stained. And the titaniums, parts the titanium parts are the rods and the crystal chambers i mentioned previously right now this panel one of the other key features of this hilt or rather the selling point is it's removable you can actually remove it from the top or from the bottom just slide it down to reveal <coughs> the lower crystal chamber now this is a bit of a surprise here this is actually a noah juice holocron marble contacted him last year to purchase one and it looks really nice. Really does. Okay. But I'll get to that part uh, later on in this video. For now, uh, yeah, uh, D ring. I understand that, you know, of course, Raxus, oh, right, excuse me, Star Killers, it is commonly known that um, Galen uses a cover tech wheel rather than D ring. However, as I mentioned previously, Jeremy does not actually aim for this hilt to be. Um, of the in-game version or rather an accurate version so I am figured that the D-ring looks best here rather than a cover tech wheel right I'm not sure if you can see this 
I'm just saying. All right, you can. This is a Shadow Fall Props PCB, a new Pixel PCB. I just purchased that as well last year. It looks really nice. It's a. Uh, it's a bit different than um, Stocks and PXL V3s in the sense that um, Stocks aligns his uh, his LEDs in groups, whereas this one is more of like a scattered version of LEDs. It looks really nice. Both versions look ni uh, nice anyways, but you know, it's up to the preference. For me, both of them are equal in terms of their coolness factor. Okay, and uh, what else? Oh yeah, the tapered uh, section of this grip has been painted black. Um, I've decided that it looks better this way. Um, this hill arrived to me when, when it originally arrived to me, it was all in raw aluminium so I decided that painted it, paint it black has it. it looks nice and it shows a bit of a contrast excuse me with the pommel as well as the um, grip section okay the screws are swapped with uh, from the original kit that comes in both steel and copper I've reached out to Sean and asked the size of the screws here and it turns out it was an M it was a set of M4 screws. So I scoured the internet and found a titanium version of it and swapped all six screws with titanium ones to go with the aesthetics of this uh, crystal chamber. So might as well, right? So yeah, I think that's it. With the mods, mods that, that has been done or rather that have been done on this hill. You know, this hill is the reason as to why one of the reasons that I've jumped on this run is that the only other star killer that is in titanium is one of from solo's hold i understand wait there you go now i understand that um you know it costs an arm and a leg for an empty hill for an empty hill um titanium star killer from solo Hold. don't get me wrong it is justifiable i understand as, as to why it's expensive the intricacies is it even worth no the intricate design of the hill and it just is a beautiful hill and it's actually one of my unicorns right however this one it's not to say this one pales in comparison this one has its um, features which makes it which stands uh, above from other hills in my opinion right yeah so I think yeah that's about the hill that's it about the hill actually now to get into the um, the nooks and crannies of the hill itself the heart of the saber, the chassis. All right, so this is Jeremy's eco chassis. Now I say eco, but it is actually loaded with features. As you can see here, some space for blinkies, an 18650 battery, an OLED, as well as a secondary crystal chamber. Now I've mentioned previously, let me just get a clear view of this. This is Noah Drew's marble. I asked for him to uh, lessen the the smoke, the smoking effect of this marble. So, and I requested for the holocron to be a cube version, a cube version of the holocron. I'm not sure if you can see that. You'll see it better once I light this up. So yeah, kill switch, profi board V2, and a smuggler's outpost 28 millimeter dark side speaker. So it's really loud. Um, yeah, I think that's it in terms of the chassis. It's really nice. Um, let's find the battery here, just for a moment. Okay. Keeps going out of focus. Apologize for that. Probably because I've, I've been playing with the distance. Never mind. Find a correct one. You know, as the magic sentence from Jeremy Springside is your negative. Don't want to screw that up. <laughs> so, yeah. Really loud. First impression, really loud. Now, there's the marble in all of its glory. See, that's the blinkies. Extra blinkies as well as the animation now I did play around with the animation of the OLED 
and it looks really fun at first but it's really distracting so I need to change that for it to become more subtle um, yeah so I printed uh, the STL file that Jeremy provided in his webs on his website in MJF nylon so it, this is a sturdy chassis right the crystal chamber the main CC looks really nice you can see it's surrounded by the fins originally I wanted to go with um, Carlos's uh, taco shop metal chassis with the spinning crystal chamber and the likes however shapeways not sure why what's the uh, the reason as to why they don't actually provide shipping for uh, precious metals to Malaysia which means they can't actually send brass copper or any other metals to Malaysia that's why we opted for the uh, eco chassis from Jeremy be that as it may it looks phenomenal looks really nice and the other nifty part here is that this secondary CC it's not actually lit from the bottom of the CC it's actually lit at the top not sure if you can see that but that's a stock V3 and PXL PCB it's being lit from the top and it's emitting the LEDs from the top to the bottom so that's why it's really bright it's a really bright secondary CC. So that's a stock V3 that's rocking on top of this hill. Or rather the secondary chassis. It's a nifty trick from Brohadi. Okay, it's really nice. Battery fits, fits in snug. Okay, let's light it up. Really loud. Again, I really need to um, swap out the animations here. It's distracting, right? But never mind. It's really nice. Now this is the ignition font from uh, Blue Force Company, the FC. Really loud. It's really loud. Um, okay, put this on. Put the grips on again. Okay. All right, okay, so with the grips on here's how it sounds I think it's loud it's really loud Fantastic resonance from this hill shit you not it's really loud I think it's too loud I need to I need to Lower this volume, man. I'll disturb the neighbors. It's already 8.30 p.m. here in Malaysia, so... Enter volume menu. Nope. Maximum volume. Nope. 80, 70, 60. I think 50 sounds fine. Volume menu, end. Yep. And it's still loud. Let's find a more appropriate font for this hill, no, shall we? I'm ready. Yeah, this is more appropriate. Now this is the Secret Apprentice uh, light sight version of Galen Merrick Starkiller from Kyberphonics. Really nice. You can see the animations from the Shadowfall. This is why I say that it's unique. It's it's a more scattered um, LEDs rather than the grouped ones from stock. Be that as it may, both are are unique on its own and both are really cool, right? Um, yeah, this is the idle animation. Looks really nice. Okay, let's find a blade for it. Though this takes a 7 8 inch. A 7 8 inch blade, right? Now, this is my first hilt, or rather my second hilt, that takes a 7 8 inch. The first one being an MPP 2.0, but I sold that since I realized that OT hilts, I'm not generalizing everything, of course, but OT hilts are really beautiful. However, in the ergonomics department, they're not really comfortable to be dueling or being held on with. So, yeah, I'm 
I'm not sure if that makes sense. Basically, what I mean is it's it's not that comfortable to actually hold an OT hilt like the Vader's and the Graflex, the original Graflex. Yeah, but yeah, it's on a tangent. This is a 7 8 hilt, uh, excuse me, 7 8 inch, and it feels really nice. There you go. It's thinner. Um, I'm not sure in terms of shadowing in comparison with the one inch blade, but it looks nice. It's the most important thing is that it's really light, it's balanced. You can actually say the same thing for a, for a one inch blade. Right now, um, I think you should come up top. Just for a moment. All right, so one inch blade, ah, excuse me, seven eighths inch blade. It's thinner and it feels way more balanced than a one inch one. So, really nice. Uh, blaster deflect. Yep. Your usual um, lightning block. Uh, blade lock up. Oops, excuse me. Yep. And uh, force hooks. Uh, do you know I'm gonna need a little help here? Yep. And the track is just holding on the power button. So yeah, a really nice hilt. Once, yes, what Jeremy said in his demo video, in one of his early demo videos, everything when it's constructed, when the blade is in, it feels really sturdy, right? So, really nice. Oops, that's the wrong panel. Oh, it is. Yeah. And that's the piece, the resistance, in my hilt. The... So, yep, the Noah Drew Marble Hold Frog, really nice. Right, slide it back in, slide up to just close the hill. Yep, I can even see the glimpse of the marble from here, so you don't need to actually open the uh, panel constantly to access the marble. Can I see it here? Actually. So it looks really nice, right? So, yeah, this is a 32 inch since I'm a sharp guy. Only at yeah, 5 foot 6, 32 inches, plenty for me. So, yeah, looks really nice. And what else we have here? Star Killer, uh, Sith version, I believe. Yep, it is. Yep, it really is nice. It's really sturdy. Uh, Really nice, really, really nice. Damn, so lucky. Um, there's still some shadowing on the blade. I'm not sure if you can see it. Yeah, you can actually see it here. There's some shadowing, but of course, this isn't a um, this isn't uh, one of KR's V2 blade here. It's their standard typical 78 inch. But regardless, be that as it may, it's really nice, right? Now let's get back down to the summary for this hilt and as well as the next hilt that I'll be showing, which is the prototype for um, from Bobo's Garage. Right, just for a moment, we'll be back. Right, yeah, so that's it. That's the demo and the review version, a uh, review of uh, the Raxus SK. So, yeah, in summary, excuse me, to summarize, it's a phenomenal hill. Really nice. It's sturdy. It's built really well by Jeremy. I understand the hype that was around on this that revolves around this hill. You know, Tim or uh, McCarthy over at uh, Turfon Orbital gave it a raving review, and uh, Benji over at um, Nerf Herder Customs. It's a solid hill. It really is, and I'm really grateful to have one. Um, coincidentally, it was. An honor to have it is an honor to have this hilt considering that um, Sean over at SP Sabres is has announced actually his retirement. Let me get this out of the way. Um, by the end of this February, he'll be leaving this community indefinitely, probably for good. 
So to have one of his hilts that he has actually produced is an honor. So seriously, I, I lucked out. Um, so yeah, really, uh, I, I lucked out on this hilt. I lucked out on obtaining this hilt and, you know, to have it installed by uh, Brohadi, Shazwan over at Bubu's Garage. You know, I called Jeremy as an SK Meister uh, over in the western side of this world. But Brohadi Shazwan, he is actually one of uh, the few um, people that I personally know that is actually a a meister as well in SK, uh, in, in terms of star killers, right? So I'm screwing this hill. Let's just switch this off, get the battery out, and move on to Saber number two. It's an empty version. It's still empty. It's not yet installed, but it is going to be one of my just pop this out first. Okay. Um one of my I'm so sorry guys. <laughs> one of my shelf queens. There you go. One of my shelf queens. Alright. Let me just put it there. Alright. Battery out. Put it away. Sort of the plaque. Now, Bubuk's Garage. A stark difference to the um, Raxus SK. Now, this is designed um, with accuracy in mind, so you could say somewhat of it being like an SKIG. I understand that this is the Wasp Waste than, rather than SKIG version, but we have a lot of other um, reference photos that sort of have this Wasp Waste. I'm talking out of my ass right now, but uh, if memory serves me right, when I played TFU one, there are instances where the SKIG is portraying, portraying the wasp waste, right? I have to excuse the rotation of this hill. Um, it's not yet installed, so it is a bit awkward, right? As well as the um, graphics here. Yeah. I mean the thumb screw or the glass eye. I'm not sure how to call this. Um, I think I actually there's some a bit of a problem with the threadings. I need I think this needs to be re-threaded. But it's okay. Um we'll just work. We'll just deal with that whenever it's time for this to be installed, right? So yeah. This is this is actually showing off a more accurate cover tech wheel. Excuse me. Cover tech wheel. Um the shroud is more accurate to Star Killers as well as the bunny ears. Um I do have the bent bunny ears to showcase a more converted version as well that it's not here with me right now, it's in the box, but imagine this with a bent, uh, sort of like a Graflex bunny ear, so it's a bit bent, right? Um, control box, is it is unique in a sense that it is magnetic, you can access the control box from there, however, um, Brohadi did give me a heads up in the sense that it's not that sturdy as of now. so. If I were to get this installed, I may need to actually. I don't think adding adding more magnets would be suffice. Probably need to just glue it in. But it is a nifty uh, trick, you know. Just yeah, there you go. Um, it's already installed with buttons here. If you can hear it now. Yeah, there are. Te it's tactile E. It's tech. It's it's magnetic tactile buttons. From what I can see, they are tactile buttons that are magnetic. <laughs> Yeah, so just pop them in. Yeah, I think that's it. Oh, the um, <laughs> the grip here, right? It is a bit different than your normal Star Killer in the sense that um, you can't actually unscrew this uh, grip like you can from the Star Killer. You have to access it. You have to uh, start uh, the removing process by removing the grub screw over here and once you remove it this grip is actually held on excuse me see this is why I said we need to actually use a need to just permanently adhere this to the control box or use stronger magnets but hey this is a prototype right so these sort of things are expected to happen so if you can look in here I'm not sure if you can see this but Okay. 
if you can see there, it's not clear. You see that opening at the bottom. It's actually a J lock system. So this grip is held on by a set of J lock system. So this hilt is. So after you remove this uh, grub screw, you need, just need to um, twist it counterclockwise and just pull it off to access the rest of the chassis once you've installed it. It's a really nifty trick. It's something that I've not usually I've not usually seen in other gra uh, star killers, so it's really unique. It's a really nice hilt. Um, yeah, not much I can say about this hilt other than it being really nice, really beautiful, and I can't wait to actually install this hilt. Right, since this is quite like a rare star killer here, it's actually done by Bubbles Garage. It's a prototype, which means that it isn't sold to any other people yet as of now. So yeah. I think that's it. Let's put Starkler back in. Now, Jeremy, oh no, excuse me. You, okay. So Jeremy did a comparison of Starkiller with, with his other Starkillers, comparing it, pinning it against Raxus. And I think it's fair for me to show the differences as well. As you can see, it's really different, right? Um, this thing is a behemoth, it's massive. It's really massive. Uh, I bet it feels really nice once you've installed everything and you know have it installed and you know get the grips or the glass eye properly installed again as well as the adding the crystal chamber and the chassis. I bet it looks really nice, right? But yeah, that's it for my review. Both hilts, seriously beautiful, really attractive. Um, I can't choose both of them, uh, actually, because you know Star Killers are Star Killer hilts are really beautiful, and these two I can't actually compare because both are different, both are unique. You can't say this this is is way superior than this one because it's it's different, right? Of course we have preferences, but for me right now, as of now, both of this are my shelf queen, especially this one since this is not installed yet. But never mind, we'll get to that. Uh, yeah, that's it. So guys, um, may the force be with you. Thanks for actually watching this review. And uh, yeah, have a good one. And good night from Malaysia. And uh, you have a great day. See ya.